All right, everybody. It's Jeff of Encore Coatings here. Uh, today is April 28th, I believe, Wednesday, April 28th, 2021. Thank you for being here. This is a very important video, okay? I'm going to call it the five things that can ruin your project uh, before you can even say ruin your project. One in particular, and that's the one I'm going to start off with, okay? I've done another video. <coughs> Excuse me. I've done another video on bad concrete and that's the first one we need to talk about okay so if you have bare concrete maybe it was just poured 28 days ago which is the the time we recommend it cure before you put cool on it or maybe it was poured 10 years ago uh it doesn't matter uh if it was bad concrete to begin with it's you know 10 years down the road it's still bad concrete so really simple to figure out okay walk across your concrete and rub your hand across uh, the concrete in various areas if your hand looks like this afterwards you have bad concrete okay and uh, what this is on your hand is a residue uh, from excess minerals in the concrete that were failed to integrate they failed to integrate into the slab, okay? And it's ironic because these are these are the good minerals that needed to be in the slab, not only to develop the strength of the concrete, but also to develop a profile that could support a coating, okay? So it's very important. If you see this, it's an automatic red flag, and what you need to do is use a densifier, okay? So if you go watch my bad concrete video, I go into a little more detail, and I actually demonstrate how a densifier works, okay? But a densifier is a product that will penetrate deep into the slab, three, four, five inches, and grab all that, that bad stuff that would interfere with a coating. Um, it will reintroduce it into the bad concrete, okay? And it's actually going to convert it into something called um, um, calcium silicate hydrate. That's the word, calcium silicate hydrate okay which is good stuff okay it's like glass so it's, it's not it's like gonna it's gonna petrify your concrete it's gonna make it a lot stronger and it's also gonna waterproof it okay from hydrostatic pressure coming up from the soil which could also interfere with any concrete coating you may consider okay so this is really important even if you if you walk across your concrete and even if you don't have this this residue if it is discolored if your concrete was poured and it has cosmetic weird stuff going on, it doesn't look normal, it's most likely a bad batch of concrete, okay? Bad batch chemistry. Maybe it, you know, if you're a homeowner and you were watching the pour happened, if, if the contractor told you that the concrete was drying too quickly, or maybe something silly happened during the pour, maybe it was just an extremely hot day and that, that concrete wasn't able to cure correctly because it was too hot. Maybe it rained on the, on the concrete too soon after the pour. Silly things happen, okay? All this can cause a bad cure, and this calcium or potassium or Portland residue, it, it could be anything. It is the kiss of death for cool and any concrete coating you may consider. So get yourself a good densifier. In that video, um, I talk about the, the best densifiers on the market. They're from Acuron Corporation. They're out of Austin, Texas. Okay. So it's going to petrify the concrete, make it much stronger, waterproof it, and it's going to skyrocket the adhesion of our coating. It's a, it's a phenomenal primer for our coating. Okay. So moving on, um, I want to show you a couple examples of, of bad concrete here. Uh, I've got my GoPro here. Let's give you a, a close-up look. Uh, these are two different uh, pieces of coating that delaminated off two different jobs, okay? Uh, you hate to see it, but this person chose a tan color. This person chose a, a dark gray color. This is the top side, okay? You can see our non-slip finish there. Uh, looks great besides it delaminated and failed because of what it was applied over. If you look on the bottom here, this is what I would call spalling concrete where it's just a millimeter, I mean, a very thin layer of compromised concrete that this product pulled up with it, okay? So spalling concrete, it's just a compromised thin layer of brittle, crumbly concrete on the surface, okay? Uh, a densifier will, will really help you out in this situation. And then this right here is just, I mean, look at this. It's just sad you know i mean this is this is actually a patch patching product that they were using that did not cure correctly okay so coatings 101 going back to coatings 101 
you got to have a clean, solid surface to bond to. Coatings 101, okay? And even if you use Triple Crown, even if you follow our protocol and you pressure wash it and all that stuff, if you have bad concrete, all you're doing is cleaning bad concrete. That problem will persist even after all of those measures you take, okay? So a densifier, it's awesome technology. Go watch my bad concrete video to learn more about that. But <clears throat> please inspect your concrete. If you have bare concrete, doesn't matter how old it is, uh, inspect it, please. Okay, moving on to number two, temperatures, okay? Uh, you wanna apply cool anywhere from 50 to 82 degrees, okay? 82, that's a weird number, right? 82 is like the magic number. Once it gets above 82, this stuff is going to dry too quickly. You're going to compromise your bond a little bit. It's still going to bond, okay, but you're going to have to work really quickly. It's not going to be a fun experience, okay? Uh, once it gets above 82, the water in our product wants to evaporate too quickly. You know, the, the concrete's pushing 100 degrees at that point. So the, the water in our product is wanting to evaporate instead of penetrate the surface to really grab a hold of it, okay? So believe me. Uh, if you're here in the South or perhaps in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's like 250 degrees every day, you want to split your coats into two different days, okay? Two different mornings or two different late evenings, okay? There's no way around it, okay? Which is fine, okay? You're going to be able to get out there early one morning before the sun gets up, start rocking and rolling with your first coat, um, and then pack it up and go home and that's fine because you're going to let that first coat really sit there cure the way it wants to unprovoked and it's going to love that okay it's going to thank you for that and the second morning you get out there apply your second coat it's going to look beautiful and then by lunchtime one two three o'clock you can apply that sealer okay the seal back clear sealer the seal back clear sealer loves being installed during the hottest part of the day. So there's no issue there. So they kind of complement each other in that regard. Okay, so temperatures, that's a big deal. Uh, if it's too hot, it's not gonna, not only will it be hard to work with, it's not gonna look good. It's not gonna blend in. You're gonna get lap marks, okay? Which brings me to my next point. Um, so this would be number three. Um, you want two good wet coats of cool, okay? I've said in other videos, this is the opposite of painting. It's not painting. Yes, you're using brushes. Yes, you're using rollers and mini rollers and standard paint equipment, but this is the opposite of painting, okay? Don't think about don't think of it as painting. Think of it as applying a new surface to your existing pool deck. You're not painting your pool deck. You're applying a brand new nice surface to it. Okay? So on that first coat, maybe you have a knockdown texture Okay, an old cool deck or something. Maybe you have a a rough broom finish on bare concrete. Okay, on a, on a, on an old knockdown coating, you want to on that first coat put it out wet enough. You know, you're dunking that three quarter inch nap roller. It's a big roller. You're dunking that thing in the bucket and getting it dripping wet, and then you're putting it out and you're kind of pushing the puddle you've created across the surface so it falls into the low spots. Okay, and then you and then you spread it out evenly okay spread out any thick spots but you want to put this stuff on liberally okay that's going to help you get uh the best performance out of the cool and the best cosmetic result afterwards okay on the first coat it's very important okay and that that second coat's going to go a lot easier and further okay uh but yeah two good wet coats you know if you got a if you got a broom finish on your concrete a lot of times you really got to put it out thick on that first coat and and your focus should be filling the the, the porosity of the surface. You want to fill the voids. You want to fill the pits. You, you know, you want to get it out. If you just act like you're painting an interior drywall and you're just, you, you got barely any product on the, on the roller, you're just, you're just adding color to the very top of that surface. You're not getting in, you're not getting in there and allowing it to not only grab hold, but really just fill and put a new surface on your pool deck. Okay. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, Keep a wet edge if you can. Don't get ahead of yourself. Um, and this is all little tips to avoid lap marks, okay? To get a nice, I mean, it looks like you just rolled out a mat. If you do it right, it's just going to look so consistent and beautiful, okay? Um, don't overwork the product, okay? When, when you got it out there, get it where you want it. And if it's pushing 80 degrees, you got to get it down where you want it liberally and then leave it alone, 
okay? You want to leave it alone. If you see, if you look back and you're like, oh, you know, something you did three minutes prior, if you see a little imperfection and your OCD is kicking in and you're like, man, I got to go over there and just smooth that out real quick, don't do it. Fight the urge. Let it just cure the way it wants to. You can fix it on your second coat, okay? So get it out there thick. Get it out there liberally. Spread out the thick spots while you can, but don't wait too long. You know, you want to get it where where it wants to be and um, leave it alone and move on, okay? So um, that was number three. Moving on to number four, you want to use the correct paint, okay? Maybe you already know this, but our product requires one gallon of exterior acrylic or latex paint for tint and activation. This is very clever, okay? Our product's very clever in this regard that you can go to your local paint store, pick out your absolute favorite color, uh, match your house, contrast your furniture, get as creative as you want, okay? But you can have literally any color you want. So you need one gallon per bucket. So if you have seven of our buckets out there, you'd need seven gallons of paint. Make sure you have cert, you know, at least a couple single gallons so you can use that to measure out your paint per bucket of cool, okay? Um, but use the correct paint. Watch my choosing paint video. I, I, I have a lot of uh, good tips on how to choose your color. Um, what, you know, how do you get a good color match? Is the cool gonna dilute the, the paint and you're gonna end up with something lighter? Go watch that other video. I'm not going to jump into that here, okay? But use the correct paint because some paints will turn our product into cookie dough. Uh, some paints will cause it to dry too quickly, which goes back to the cosmetics of the final result. You know, you don't want any lap marks. You don't want imperfections in your texture. These are all things that are really going to help you guys out, okay? Okay, and the fifth one, y'all, is just... I guess it's not something that will ruin your project. It'll actually make it better. Just watch my videos, you know, and, and I don't say that because I'm not a YouTuber. Okay. I'm never going to sit right here and say, subscribe to my channel and, and, and like, and share, share, you know, I don't care. Uh, what I care about is educating you. So we have a good reputation and you love your pool deck. That's the only thing that matters to me. And, and I'm really passionate about this anyway. So that helps. But, and I know, I know I can talk and talk and talk, but, um, I really want you to have something you absolutely love with zero issues. And you just look back and, and you think of it as a great experience and a great investment on your home. Okay. So <clears throat> That's about it. And I can't thank you guys enough. Oh, okay. One more thing. I've actually tested a new paint available at Lowe's. If you get your paint for the cool at Lowe's, previously we recommended the Season Flex. I tested the Season Plus the other day. I think I like it a little better. So you might want to consider that Season Plus. Season Flex will work, but Season Plus I think is a little better. So um, yeah, y'all, I, I just want to thank you guys so much. Um, we're in the middle of the pool deck season here. We're rocking and rolling, but I, I, I like finding the time to do these videos for y'all because, uh, like I said, we, we want you to love it. We want you to have zero issues. And of course, please call us anytime. Uh, EncoreCoatings.com. My name is Jeff. Call us anytime. It's 888-776-2242. Me or Ryan will be able to help you out. Okay. So thank you guys so much. Hope you're having a great day. Take care of yourself. Bye.